Hello. Today, I am going to introduce myself. My name is Karen, and I'm going to be painting this white chicken. Just a little background. This is my first um, video for you, and I've been painting watercolor for over 25 years and teaching for the last 12. So I'm very excited for this first project, and this is what I have so far, and you will notice all this blue is masking. You can do it without mask. I've done it both ways, but I love the way it captures the white even better. And what I'm using for that is this drying gum, this PBO drying gum. It's really, really nice, and it, it goes on thick and, and protects it from getting paint in there. <clears throat> Another thing I use, and trust me, I'm not being paid for this. This is just my personal products I use. I like the same brand in more when you're making like little eyelashes or something very fine line, even like these. In this case, I did not use this. This is a good product. It gets a little frustrating at times because you have to keep doing this to get it out and wiping it off. But the results are great. It's just a little bit of a pain. So anyway, something to think about. And just knocked my microphone. Hope that didn't make a big noise. So anyway, let me show you my reference photo. I went recently to a farm that had many varieties of chicken. And I'm hoping to do some more. So this is our reference photo. And um, you're going to see a finished product, which is this. And that's what we're going to have in the end, hopefully, that that's what we end up coming up with. Okay, so if you're ready, I am ready to begin. So I will get my reference photo back here, so we're all ready to go. Now the first thing I want to do is we're going to use a lot of water on this background. And the reason I do, I get a lot of water, is because... I want that background to really be soaked in and we're gonna make that background kind of dark. So I'm just taking pure water. We can go right up to her feathers, just like that because of the mask. And we're just gonna get this water all over the background. It'll take a few minutes, so bear with me, but it is so worth it when it's done. Okay, right down here. Now, every so often you're gonna see me tipping my board because you can tell where you've um, left some, some water off. It'll actually just show up as a big dry spot. So you wanna tip it every so often, make sure you got it really coated everywhere. Now, when we come down by the feet, we don't have to worry if we accidentally get a little color in the feet because when we put the background in, this part's gonna be a little bit gold anyway, you'll see. But, for right now, I'm just trying to be careful. And, but if we get it in, if we accidentally get some water in where the color's gonna go in, don't even worry about it. One thing that I love about watercolor is the beautiful flow that you can get. It's such a lovely medium. And a lot of people tend to shy away from watercolor because they think it's unforgiving. And the more I've painted, and the many years, I've realized that it's really not that unforgiving. I think the only thing that you can really mess up with watercolor is if you get a lot of colors that will make what they call mud. So that means it gets very, very dull on your actual picture. And I used to, in my early years, that would happen to me quite a bit. But what I found was when I used more transparent colors, I didn't get that and you can mix a lot of them together and you don't get that dull mud look. Okay, I'm just gonna come right in here. We're almost three-fourths of the way around and then we'll get going here. Okay, so all this side here, you see I'm saturating it really heavily. Now I have a mix of um, synthetic brushes and some more expensive brushes. This particular one I'm using, you certainly do not have to use this, is a little bit more expensive because it's um, it's a Skoda number 14 Reserva Kalinsky. 
So that Kalinske is what makes it get really expensive. The reason I'm using this one is because it holds a lot of water. And that's what I'm trying to achieve is a lot of water. But remember, you don't have to use that expensive a brush. You can use a nice synthetic one and it'll do the job just fine. This one just maybe makes my work a little bit easier. All right, so I'm gonna get right down to that masking here. We're almost all the way around. And then we'll start mixing our color. Now, when I put a lot of water like this, I want that mixture just to soak in. Let me make sure, make sure I didn't miss any spots. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna take just a smidgen of this out here with a paper towel. And where it dripped down, right there. Not that that will matter, I just don't want it to go into my color. Okay, so while that's soaking in, that gives us a great chance to mix up our colors. And what we're gonna do is use this color. It's becoming one of my favorite colors. It is called, um, it is called Horizon Blue and it is by Holbein. I really, really like it. This is the color, hopefully you can see this. If not, I'll bring it over for you a little bit closer. Now, in this case, because watercolor dries lighter, once it's all dry, it's gonna look darker and then it's gonna do lighter when it's all dry. I wanna put a lot of color down because I don't wanna to have to go back and do it again, my background. And the more color I have at this stage, it's going to be really good to um, pop out that white that we so carefully masked off. So I'm getting a nice big puddle. And my second color I'm going to use is cobalt. And I believe this cobalt, I think it's HWC2. It possibly is Daniel Smith. I'm not sure on this one. I have a little reference here, let's see. Nope, I didn't put it. But cobalt runs pretty true in most cases. And um, so just kind of of your preference. So if you have a cobalt, don't worry about getting the same color. Now, the Horizon Blue, that is a Holbein, and I don't know of another color that gets quite this hue, but it's very, very pretty. Okay, so that should be maybe just one more dab in here. Now, if you can't see my palette right here, this is about the consistency I have. So it's pretty loose, you can see that. This one's pretty loose. And that watercolor has probably soaked in enough to where we can just start putting our color down. So I'm gonna just really start putting this blue down, the horizon blue, and I am not using any specific method. It's wet enough and that helps carry the paint. I am gonna leave some white um, because it'll make it look like some clouds. All right, so a little bit of dark, the cobalt blue. We're gonna mix a little here. Just gonna put it right on top of here. Maybe just make that go right to the feathers. Then I'm gonna pick up some more of this horizon Put it right down here to the feathers, okay. And then where it gets closer here, I'm going to dip some of that cobalt because right now I'm using the horizon, but I'm gonna put quite a bit of blue over this because I really, really want this part to pop out. So just going to get some more of that cobalt and put that really close to the feather now you can see I've got a lot of water up here and that's okay. I'm gonna show you what to do so it, it doesn't just pool when it dries. We don't want it to get in the comb there. Okay, so we're gonna keep on going. This part is pretty self-explanatory. Um, again, the water just carries all this lovely color I mean the water the water makes the color flow so nicely now because that is pooling a little bit quite a bit I'm just going to take a paper towel and just dab up some of that maybe here too again I don't have to be in a super hurry at this point to get down there 
at the bottom because I know I'm I'm very very wet with these colors. So, all right, gonna get a little bit more cobalt there. I bring a little bit up there. I'm gonna come down to here, and I'm gonna start carrying that horizon blue down. So I am a little more careful when it comes to around his little beak because we want that to stay kind of yellow. So I can just go a little more carefully. I'm using my left hand right now, not because I'm ambidextrous, but I'm trying to avoid turning the picture so it, it stays nice for the video. Okay, so now we're just about to the point where we're gonna start using another color. I'm gonna put just a little bit more here. And the next color I wanna use is raw sienna. Again, this is really nice and wet, which is good because I'm going to change trays and we're gonna use some raw sienna. Okay, so this raw sienna is by Windsor Newton. I've really, really come to love this raw sienna. It's just a nice overall color. It's not entirely transparent, but enough that it blends really well with other colors with it. I use raw sienna oftentimes when I'm painting a face and add something like some Scarlet Lake or just sometimes for a million, something like that. All right, so we're gonna just get a little bit more and we're just gonna let that go right into our blue. See that? We're just gonna let it come right down there. A little bit on our chicken, but that's okay. It's gonna really load it here. Okay, just keep carrying this down here. The mask really does make it easier for you to get right up there without getting it into the chicken. A little trickier when you come down to where we've left just white. But those little um, feet are gonna be kind of yellow anyway, so it's okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I need to pick up just a little bit more. Right in there. We're almost to the point. Now remember, I'm trying to make this purposely pretty dark just because I know what's going to happen when it dries. And our next color that I'm going to put down here is going to be called Quin Burnt Orange. It's actually Quinacridum Burnt Orange, but I just say Quin Burnt Orange. Most people do. It's just easier. Um, you don't have to say the Quinacridum. And <laughs> It just makes it easier. Anyway, so right here at the bottom, I'll get another paper towel and we'll sop up just a little bit of this water here. Just right down here. There we go. A little bit on this side. All right, now this is still really juicy, really wet, so this is good. So I am going to pick up some of this Quin Burnt Orange. It's a lot like um, Burnt Sienna, only fresher and brighter. I love this color. And I actually found out about it when I went to a workshop in Georgia a few years ago. And um, the artist was Ann Avgott. And she is the one that introduced this particularly work to our workshop, this Quin Burnt Orange. And I have never stopped using it. I love it. It just goes with so many different things. So we're just kind of going around his little feet. If we accidentally get some color in there, not gonna worry. Eventually, this is gonna be some of our shadow color on top of this. All right, so it's looking pretty good. And I feel like we got the colors dark enough that it's gonna really stand out. I might even put that a little higher so that really contrasts against there. There we go. All right, now the next step and I won't bore you with the whole part of drying it, but I am gonna dry it, that's our next step. And when you get it this wet, you gotta dry it until it's completely dry. I mean bone dry. And um, some people might wanna just leave it overnight, but when I wanna paint, I wanna paint, I don't wanna wait. So I'm gonna use a blow dryer, and then you'll see me to start to blow dry, and then it's gonna just come right off, and then you will see it all done. That will go to our next step. All 
Okay, I think we have it all nice and dry. So now the fun begins because we've got the background in. I'm very happy with the background. You'll see when I take off this mask right here, how nice and dark that's gonna be. So what I'm using is a little pickup rubber cement. Just bought it like this at our local art store. You can get them online. It may be a different brand, but bottom line, it's going to pick this up really nice. This one's a speed ball and a pick best test quality pickup. So anyway, kind of nice to know. So what I'm gonna do is just go around and pick this up. And again, this has to be super dry and it is. I really dried the heck out of it. So now we have this nice edge here. The only thing I'm not gonna pick up is this and this little thing that goes on his cheek. I don't know what that is called. So for now, it's gonna be this little thing on his cheek. And we're gonna pick this up. Now, if you've never used this before, it has a tendency to do this and you can actually pick this off or cut it. I've actually cut it before when it gets too dirty, but it takes it off so nice. You can do it with your fingers as well, just kind of roll. But you gotta make sure your fingers are really, really clean if you're gonna do that. All right, so we're gonna just do this here. Now, I'm gonna go back over where some of this looks like it's stuck and we'll just Make sure all of it's off. See how easy that comes off? Now we have our nice little feather detail. <clears throat> okay, it's getting really yucky right now. And this is where I have to pick it off every so often. So just come down here. Almost done. Right up here, I want to be really careful of that little area there. All right, I don't just want to get that little bit right in here. And if I accidentally pick it off, I will show you how to fix it. So it's not a big deal if it does. Okay, so I don't like how dirty that's looking. I don't have time to cut it off. So I'm just gonna use this brand new one here and we'll get a nice clean one. It, this can be used a long, long time. Don't think that, but see how that's taking some of that off. There we go. All right. And we'll leave that. So I think we're good. I like to run my hand over it just to make sure everything's off and it looks like it's nice and smooth. So I think we're good to go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to establish that edge right in here. So if we're having a white chicken, we're gonna want this white chicken to look really pretty with colors and I use some purples and blues and all kinds of fun colors to make him come to that to that place. So what I'm gonna use right now is this is a number 12. It's a low Cornell. Unfortunately, you cannot buy these anymore and I love these. But a good substitute I found is, um, let's see, is Jack Richardson is really nice. I also have some that um, they come bigger, and this is a very reasonable brush. This Princeton Velvet Touch it's really got a nice point, and it's a good brush too, and it's synthetic. So these are pretty reasonable. Okay, so what we're gonna do first, we're gonna go with this Cobalt Violet. <clears throat> and this was made by um, Holbein as well. All right, here we go. So. We're just gonna go, I'm gonna look at my reference photo and we're gonna put some of this down here and just come along here, right? Keeping all that white. There's a little white on that wing. I'm gonna soften these edges here, right? Just soften it down. But we're gonna keep that up there except for this part, I just want to soften a little teeny bit. There we go. 
Okay, and then I'm going to actually use a little bit of that raw sienna again, because as I look at my chicken reference, it's got just a little bit of yellow right in here, so I'm gonna drop just a little bit here and right underneath this first part. Now I will go darker a little bit later with this. All right. Now on top of this, and this is what I love about these colors, I'm going to use what's called a Verdita Blue, and it's made by Holbein. I mostly use Daniel Smith Holbein and then certainly some Winsor Newtons as well. I'm just gonna drop a little of color right in there, right in there, just a little bit. Now I realize this is a white chicken, but these are things that are gonna make this white chicken just look so pretty. Okay, and this is gonna really pop out all this nice white. Now I wanna use a little bit of, I see, I don't know if you can see in this reference, and I'm not sure if it's going to really pull through, but I see just a little bit of horizon blue here, and um, sometimes we gotta force our imagination, but a little bit there, maybe just a little bit here too. So that's what I'm looking for, and I'm just, imagining what colors will make this chicken really, really pretty. So I'm gonna put a little of that Horizon Blue. I'm using very loose mixes. I don't want it to be too thick because this is what we're just trying to get. So if you can't see it, I'm not sure if you can. It's just very, very loose. Thicker over here, lighter over here. And if you're wondering about these little trays I'm using, I love these. They're porcelain, I get them at World Market. I actually did not think of this myself. I got this idea off of, um, I think, a Facebook or something, and I was like, wow, I want to try that. And boy, I have loved it ever since. Um, they're just great little trays that clean up good, and I think they're $4.99. So you can't beat the price. Okay, so I put a little bit there, and I'm seeing a little more purpley right at the base of that. So I'm just going to mix a little of that in, that kind of establishes his little wing right here. So we'll just let that float. That's one thing pretty and fun about watercolor is you can float those colors in. So we're gonna leave that strip there and then I'm gonna go back to the Verdita Blue and some of this right in here, we want those tips to be white. We're just gonna melt a little of this color up here So use your imagination. Don't be afraid of color. It just, it really makes it fun just to be able to try different colors. And if you don't like it, you could always paint it again. Um, not that you want to, but most of the colors, if you're using transparents, you can make them really work together for you. Okay, so I'm going to put underneath this chicken wing, we're going to go back to that Quinbert orange because he has a little bit darker. Again, I'm not sure if you can see this, but I wanna show you. So right in here, I see a little darker and that's where I wanna have that. I actually see a little pop of this right here. So I'm gonna pop a little color right there. And remember, this always dries lighter. So I'll tickle a little out on the edge there. And then I'm going to, and I'm using quite a thin mix. So I'm gonna just Put a little bit down here. Try not to just do a straight line like that. It'll look more interesting if you pull it down more into a shape pattern kind of. There we go. Now at the very, on this reference, it's a little darker here. So I'm just gonna pull a little of that Verdita Blue, which it will make a really pretty gray color right in there. I don't need to have it everywhere. Just let that kind of mingle into that color. Okay, now I also see a little of the same color right down by his chest. We're gonna wanna leave that white there. We'll just put some down as he goes, um, as my line goes down towards his little leg, her little leg, sorry. I may call I've been doing a lot of roosters lately, so I think I'm used to saying him instead of her. Now, what I'm doing is just tickling these edges. I want this edge to be white, so I'm using my very tip 
I'm not getting into the inside. I'm just taking my tip along the outside just to soften that a bit, okay? And right next to that, on my reference photo, I think we could just drop a little teeny bit of that horizon blue. Again, when it's wet, it'll just mingle right in there. All right, so I want that to dry just a little bit before I go back into it. And while we're waiting for that to dry, I might try to soften this out. While we're waiting, we're gonna go to the eye and to the waddle and the comb. See, even though this is partially dry, you can still soften it out just a little bit. I'm just pulling it down. You don't want to overuse your tip because you'll fry your tip, but this just kind of keeps it soft. I may put another color down eventually right in here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is supposed to be fun. Okay, now let's do this little comb and then we'll do his waddle. And then eventually we'll go to his eye. So for the top comb, I want to use a nice lemon yellow. And even though you see it as red, this will just put a nice glow underneath it. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna do all around here, including his beak, in this yellow. Remember, we left the mask here because we're gonna keep that little circle on his cheek. We wanna keep that white. So I'm just gonna work around here, work around the eye. Just go down there. Okay, we're gonna let that dry a little bit, but what we can do is we can go down to the feet while that's drying. So we're gonna go this time to a yellow ochre. And yellow ochre, pretty much, I, I'm not even sure I have it on here that I used, but I'm not sure that I, nope, I didn't put it on here. Um, yellow ochre is a great color for a nice gold, and it can be a little more opaque, but it's still a nice color for these feet. What I'm trying to do is do a little bit negative painting there so it looks like there's some feathers coming down. I want to keep this white here. So we'll just take this here and just leave a nice little white strip right there on this side. And this side, we're going to even make it a little wider of a white strip. So we'll just come down here, maybe negative paint just a teeny bit, right down here. I'm using a number 12. I think I already told you that, but I sure wish they made these low, low Cornell. I, that was all I used for years and years and years, and I love it. And they last long and they're reasonable, and ah, sometimes good things come to an end. Okay, so now on top of this, those feet are looking cute, but they're they're just not dark enough. So we're gonna make a we're gonna take our Quinburn orange. Only this time I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. You can see right here, I'm making this quite a bit thicker. And in the top part, I want it to go a little bit darker. So we'll kind of make sure we look like we have some feathers coming down. I'm going to thin that down just a little bit as we go down the feet. So I'm rinsing, dipping on my cloth to just have not too much water added. And then I'm going to pull that down, just right down into his feet. So he's got a little color. We'll still leave that nice and light on that side. We may come back later and put a little gold, but right now we're going to leave it. Same thing on this. We're just gonna go like here, make it make the viewer think there's a little bit of hairs coming over that leg. Dip, dip on my my nice towel. Again, this takes the excess water out, and now we can just pull that color down right there into the feet. Now we're gonna go one step further. I'm gonna actually pull this one down just a teeny bit more. We're gonna put a little bit of indigo. Nope, sepia, sorry. Sepia is a really, really dark brown, but I love it. I use it a lot um, for pops. So this is my sepia. 
And because that's wet, I'm not gonna need a whole, bot, a whole bunch. I'm just gonna drop some color right at the very top, just on both sides, just gives it a little pop. And one thing I just wanna um, emphasize that every painting needs to have some value. And if it doesn't have value, and value is like darks, the lightest light and the darkest dark. And value is what is gonna make your payment, your payments. How about your paintings just come alive? Oh, it's such a beautiful thing. And if you see something all the same color, it just gets kind of boring. So you always want some good value. I'm going to go back up here, and this is nice and dry, and I'm going to use this color called Scarlet Lake. It's a great orangey red color, and I'm going to mix it fairly thick, pretty thick, and it's just going to go right on top of here. Oops, I better not move that so it stays in the camera's lens. So I'm just going to come through here. Just kind of carefully. At this point, I could use a smaller brush if I wanted to. And if you don't have confidence to use a bigger brush, just go to a smaller brush. It'll be fine and get this detail. So I'm just going to come right in here. Isn't that a rich, pretty color? It's actually this comb is a little darker than the reference photo. photo. I do have to move this a little. I hope you can see it. But to get my angle, Try to move it down here. Just need to have that come down. Okay. And then we're going to move this color right down the whole waddle. This is really bright, but it's so pretty. Now, remember how we put the yellow underneath that? I'm going to lift a little bit soon on his comb and I'm going to show you how we can lift a little that back to the yellow for the lightness. I am going to go to a smaller brush in this detail I'm using. What number am I using? I think it's an eight. Yep, it's an eight round. So it's going to go right in here. Now when I go around this eye, I want to leave a little bit of an edge around his eye. I'm going to get close to his eye but not right up to his eye. Just leave a little bit of an edge, maybe come a little closer on the back side of his eye. And I'll show you why in just a little bit. Okay, how about those? I'm gonna go right around here. There we go, almost done. Now, clearly, this is not done because he, that waddle has some shadowing and stuff. But we'll come back when that's a little more dry and we'll work on that. Okay. Alrighty. Now I'm going to show you while this is still wet, I'm going to dip. And actually, I'm going to get a little bit bigger of a brush here. So I want a damp brush. This is really damp. And I'm going to just take out a little bit of that, a little light on top of his comb. There we go. It, it just kind of gives it a little light source and it goes right down to the yellow where the yellow shines through. And if you think that it's not yellow enough, we can add more yellow later. Now, I wanna show you here, it looks like I missed my blue in just a little bit. We can fix that. And that's a nice thing to know. You're like, oh no, I missed my blue. What am I gonna do? I'll show you how we'll fix it a little bit later. Right now, we're gonna go to his little beak and we already did it a lemon yellow. Now we're gonna go with that yellow ochre and make it just a little bit darker. And as I look at my reference photo, you can see, let's see, that right in here, it goes darker. And we wanna keep this kind of light here. So it goes a little darker. So that's what we're gonna to do too. Let's put it just a little bit darker on the bottom part. So we'll just kind of bring that in, keep that on the top, just like that. So it has a little light spot right there. Now, in here is where I use the original Horizon Blue. So I still have a little on my palette. So I'm just going to dip my 
brush in here and I will just lightly come in here. Got to be really careful because I don't want it to bleed into my red. And then I'm just going to take my finger and just kind of move it. So now I don't have a white spot anymore. Okay, we're going to let that dry. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but little um, roosters, or chickens and roosters, they have these little claws. So I'm going to take some of my um, burnt umber again, just a little bit. I'm just going to kind of put some little claws right there. Just a little bit. We're going to have some shadow here, so this it won't be quite as dark when we're all done. Okay, there we go on that. Now we're going to let that dry. We're going to go to the eye pretty soon, but actually I want to put a little more dark here. So since I already have my sepia just a little bit on my palette and I use that yellow ochre, I'm going to mix a little yellow ochre and a little bit of sepia and I'm going to get that darker look that I just saw on my reference photo right there. And that will just um, tickle that off at the top. There. That gives him that little nice darker part towards the beginning of his beak. Okay, so let's look at here. I am seeing just a little horizon blue here on this wing. Just a little bit. It's very soft, very subtle. Just making it look like there might be a little bit of wings there. And let's go down to here. Reference photo shows me that right about here, it kind of has just a little bit more of a dip of color. So I made that pretty light. Go along the edge, soften that out, just like that. It's okay if you have little white streaks in between, it kind of looks cool. Now, in again the reference photo right here, there's there's all of this is white, but right to the white, there's kind of a darker color. And I don't want to do it just like that because it kind of looks like a dirty brown. So we're gonna just go back to our Redeeter Blue. And again, we're just gonna put a little of this color down here. I'm gonna have to move this a little bit. Maybe I won't. I'm gonna try to achieve a little bit of negative painting here. So I want those feathers to pull out. So here's what I'm doing. I'm closing that gap. See how that looks like feathers now? And I can do that along the way and then go right back in here and close that gap just a little bit. See, and now it looks like he's got some feathers coming down here. And we'll just soften this out at the bottom. So it just looks natural, but you see some feathers. Okay, now we can do that same thing here, but I don't want to carry that same color too far. So this time I might just use a little of that purple again. It's uh, really called cobalt violet. So just a little bit here. We're going to do kind of the same thing. We're just going to go right in here. Let his little chicken feathers come out. And then on this side, we'll just smooth that out on this side. Okay, just really, really subtle. I'm going to go back to some Horizon Blue, very, very thin, very thin. I'm going to go up to these feathers here and just put the idea, we want to keep these tips white. Just going to move a little bit of feathers down here just by there we go just just to suggest a little bit of feathers right in here okay we can check this it's almost dry so I'm gonna wait just a I'd rather wait too long than go too short and have it not be what we want so now I'm going to put a little more this is very very thin of this cobalt blue right in here to bring out these feathers right over that raw sienna that we originally started with 
and this will just pop a little bit of those feathers out. Okay, starting to look like a little chicken, huh? Looks like in here we could put a little bit of color. So I think I'm going to carry this Quinbert orange very, very, very thin, and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my raw sienna. So it's just gonna be really subtle right down here. Just gonna have it come like this. Just kind of soften this part down. I just want to have some color down there, that's all. And I like to leave those little white spaces because they make you think of feathers. I didn't really negative paint it, I just kind of got it in there. Now I think we can use that same mix I just made just a little bit underneath his chin here. Here we go. Just a little. Now I know there's a lot of color in here, but he is going to look like a white chicken when we're done still. It's getting closer. I'm gonna take this mask off here because that part is some hair and I might close that gap just a little bit. And then this is that circle on his cheek. Okay, so and we're gonna do the eye next and then we'll go back to this area here. So for the eye, I like to draw a little catch light to remind me not to paint in here. So I'm gonna put a little catch light right there so that I leave that white. And I am going to use, this is an eight, and I'm going to put the yellow ochre right in that eye and I'm gonna mix a little bit of the Quinbert orange. So a little Quinbert orange, a little yellow ochre. And I'm going to go into the entire eye, but not my catch light. Now we will eventually be putting some black right around there. And that's when it's gonna really, really pop out. But you see that I purposely left, remember when I, I had us do the red, I left a little white right around that eye, which really makes it look better. Okay, so while that's drying, we're gonna take, we still got some Scarlet Lake on our palette. So I'm gonna mix a little of this Verdita Blue. This still, I have a little bit, but I want it a little thicker. Kind of makes a purpley color. I might even add just a little Horizon Blue, darken that up a little bit, a little bit more. In fact, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of cobalt to that. I want it to be dark enough that you see it, but not too dark. Here we go, that's good color. So I just kind of took some colors on my palette. Originally, I took a little Scarlet Lake, a little bit of um, Horizon Blue, a little bit of uh, Verdita Blue, and a little bit of Cobalt Blue, just to get a kind of a purpley look. And here's what I'm gonna do right here by the cheek. I'm gonna just darken this right up to this little white area. Kind of just go around here. And that's part of that waddle. But now that looks really silly if we just left it this way. So we're going to soften this out just a little bit. So he has a little bit of form. And we can use that same color right underneath that comb, just like that. And put that right up there. Now this little white spot is supposed to be hair in there. So I'm gonna go back to my Scarlet Lake and just, I, I just went, it's fairly thick and I'm just, I want to make this just a little bit thinner right here. So you see it? And I'm gonna come in just a little bit so it looks more like some hairs there. There we go. Yeah. All right. 
And I can't wait to get that black in the eye because that's going to make such a difference. It's going to really pop that out. And we're going to just take, I don't, I just used to a long time ago use straight black from the two, but I never do that anymore. I use, um, I mix my own. So like I could go to like a Payne's Gray Blue, any dark, dark color on your palette. In this case, I'm gonna use a little Payne's Gray Blue. I'm gonna use some of my um, Indigo. Just, I don't have to mix very much, maybe a little of the Quinn Burnt Orange, just to get me a nice black color. I mean, make sure that's dry. I'm gonna go around this little eye I think that might be still just a little bit wet. I'm gonna wait just a hair. I don't want it, don't want it to go anywhere. How professional is that? Blowing on my picture. It might be okay. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I have enough. We're gonna go right around here. Needing that little white light that we put and we still have the gold right down there now what we're gonna do is take that same mix that we used on the waddle this kind of purpley red and I still have some on my palette I'm gonna take that and right around the eye where underneath the white I'm just gonna put a little bit of that too it's just very subtle, but it's a little. In fact, I want to go just a teeny bit darker underneath this little beak right in here. We'll just give it a contrast. All right, we are almost done with this chicken. It, it's turning out really cute. I'm very pleased. I hope you will be. And I think that I feel really good about this. Um, Trying to see if there's anything more. I might put a little more contrast right here. So I'm gonna to go to a cobalt blue, a little darker, and we're so close to being done. So right in here, just make that feather pop out just a little bit. There we go. All right, and we'll soften this along the edge. And what I love about watercolor, especially when you use a lot of transparency, look how many different layers you can see through that. It just looks really pretty. I think I like that so much, that cobalt. I'm gonna add just a little bit more underneath this area where it kind of pops out just a little bit. Now, if you wanted to take in uh, this whole painting further, you could, and I might on some of them that I've done before for a demo, you could decide to make a fence behind here, kind of like the chicken coop fence with your brush, draw it out first and make sure you have it all even and that would look really cute. But just in lieu of the time we have today, we're not gonna have time to do that, but I think it would look really cute. And so here is our chicken. Oh, I forgot one thing. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to end the session before I, before I finish the way I should. I am so sorry. So we're gonna take some cobalt blue I'm gonna mix some, this is gonna be for a shadow. Wow, I almost forgot this. This is an important part. So sorry about that. And I'm just gonna mix a little what's called, ooh, that's a little too more, much that I want. I'll add a little more blue. So I'm going to put a nice little shadow underneath him. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this Quinn Burnt Orange. So I've got so I really did some crazy colors here. I did some cobalt, I did some quin, quinacridone rose, which is by Daniel Smith, and I'm using a little bit of um, quin burnt orange. So what we're gonna do is just give him a little bit of a shadow here. Just a little bit. And come close to there. Fill that in. Look what I did. Oh my goodness, see? I know you're probably like, oh my goodness, she just ruined it. But I'm gonna show you how we can even get that out and it'll be okay. All right, so right in here, just 
gonna make this little chicken have something to stand on, a little bit of a shadow going. Just give them a little bit more right here. And then what I'd like to do is take my really thin liner brush. This is such, I love this brush. It's just a number one liner brush. And I'm gonna go to, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go to a little bit of the, the yellow ochre, and I'm gonna go to a little bit of my Quinn Burnt Orange, mix some of that in, which we've used that mixture before. Get it really washy. I'm gonna put just a few little, um, like straw pieces that he's sitting on, a he's standing on straw, just to give us the idea he's on the ground, got a little bit of straw, okay? And see, I almost forgot one important step. Honestly, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But when I have something like a chicken or a rooster, I feel like it just needs to have a little bit of splattering all around it. So I am going to do that. And I'm going to splatter with a little bit of sepia because sepia is so dark and it will really pop out. So that's what I'm gonna do. I want this to dry just a little bit. In fact, this is gonna be very annoying, but I am going to dry this just a little before I splatter. That is good enough. I just wanted it to be mostly dry so that I could get a nice splatter for myself. So mixing up some sepia, and the sepia is going to be pretty loose to get the desired splatter that I want. Look at, I am splattering everywhere. Goodness, I did tell you I would show you how to fix that too, so I don't wanna forget that. Okay, so here we go. We're just gonna splatter, splatter. I'm just taking, loading up this, holding it with these fingers, just splattering it down. We don't have to overdo it, but just you know what? I'm gonna splatter right in that boot, that blooper right there. You won't even know. Put a little splatter right there. A little splatter up here so it looks like we didn't just do it in that area. Look at that. We can just cover up our mistake. And who's gonna be the wiser except for all of you that are watching this? Okay, that's gonna finish our chicken. I hope you like it. Um, if you have any comments, I would love them. Please just do um, positive constructive ones. If you like it, I'm planning on making some more videos. If you have something specifically you'd like to see um, how to paint, let me know that in the comment lines and I would be happy to do it. So again, signing off for now. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.